So I'm gonna show you how to fix this common problem. You can see here this quartz countertop, very, very bright. And we really can't see any of the detail of the veining inside there. And this is very typical in real estate photography with modern homes that like to have these almost all white type of countertops. When you look at them on site, you can see a lot of the veining that would be there, but you can see here when we zoom in a lot, it's just really hard to see. Now, there's different ways to do this. You can see I've already reduced the highlights. I've been playing with some of the sliders. Overall, I've got a good looking picture. And by the way, this started with a flambient example where I've got just an ambient shot and then this did it no favors for lighting. So you can see I popped a whole bunch of other stuff around here to get this then to blend. And then of course, then I had this image. So this is much better. It's almost all flash using various pops. But when it came to this countertop, it's a problem. Now, one way to fix this would be to use some Lightroom Classic masks. And that's what was done here on this example. And you can see it's okay. It still looks a little bit on the muddy side. We can do a much better job taking less time if we just do some simple stuff in Photoshop while we're doing the flambient blending. Now, if you're not familiar with Photoshop, don't worry, we're gonna be using some layers. It's easy enough to do, you can follow along. And if you're really not familiar with it and you feel uneasy with it, you might wanna take a look at my course on expert editing for real estate photography. It's part of the courses that I have on doing professional real estate photography. And I have links to that down in the description for this video. But let's step through this particular example and see how we can easily and quickly do this in Photoshop with also a lot more flexibility. So now that we're in Photoshop, and this was just a copy with the other Lightroom adjustments applied to it, so I can just run through this very quickly without boring you with all the other stuff that led up to this. Let's concentrate just on this counter. The best way to do this, so that you can get a lot of flexibility, some accuracy, and really tone this down is to first make a duplicate layer of this particular layer or whatever else you're working with by doing Control J. Now, if you were in the flambient process, then you would wanna stamp those layers like I talk about in the expert editing course. Now, with this layer, we have a lot of flexibility of stuff we can do to it. The first thing we wanna do is turn it into a smart object so that we can edit that more and edit it further. Now, if you've never done that, it's very simple. We're just gonna right click on it and say convert to smart object, and it's done. You'll see this gives us a history if you've never used smart objects before. The next thing we want to do is select that countertop. Now, with newer versions of Photoshop, it becomes easy. If you go to where all the quick selection stuff is over here, you can grab the object selection tool, make sure you have lasso selected, and then you draw a lasso around this countertop. You can get fairly sloppy because the AI is pretty quick at finding and detecting stuff. And you can see it drew some marching ants around this countertop. Now I can be selecting other things that it thought that it picked up in object selection like the refrigerator. Where this comes in handy though right now is it might pick up the faucet and sure enough, as I mouse over it, I can see it selecting that faucet. Zoom in here a little bit more so you can see better. You can see it's selecting it. If I have on quick selection, this selected, which up here, this shows that it would subtract from selection. If I now select something like the faucet and I click on that, then it's gonna subtract that from the selection. You can see the marching ants now went around there. Anyways, at this point, I wanna put a layer mask on this because we're only working with the counter. So you might remember layer masks when we go into the expert editing course. There's a lot of ways to do it. You can click this little icon down here, but also you can go up to the layer menu, go down to layer mask, and then reveal selection. So now you've got a layer mask with the selected, so we're only gonna be affecting that area. And if you want to later, you can always erase or add to that. So let's center ourselves in here so we see what we're doing. Go to the layer itself, not the mask, and we wanna to go to Filter and then Camera Raw Filter. Now this then basically is just Lightroom Classic. So a lot of the very familiar stuff you'd see there that you would be applying on a traditional Lightroom Classic mask, 
you can do here, but you're gonna have a lot more flexibility and it really does get much easier with some of the editing. You'll see why as we go forward here. So first thing is, it's a little on the bright side. If we go in here at 100%, we can see it's also kind of just a little soft. So right about here, let's take a look and drop those highlights just a little bit. Now don't worry about everything else, we're only concerned with the countertop. Also, I'd increase the texture a little bit, I'd increase the clarity a little bit, and I'd down the blacks. Now, the reason for this is sharpening is more than just using the sharpening slider. It's also a matter of adjusting contrast. So we're already bright. We need to add the contrast in there by lowering the blacks, and then of course, mid-tone contrast with texture and clarity. Texture just gets us that extra refined area inside these areas but it's still a little bit dull right here. So, and that's because we're focusing a little bit farther away than the nearest point. So this is gonna be a little dull, a little soft in here, but it's still with an acceptable sharpness, but if you wanna pump it up, then what you do is you go under detail and you start increasing in the sharpening slider, but that's not all. We're gonna increase this a little bit to where we see it get nice and sharp, not overly sharp, but once we do, on the mask here, we're gonna move this slider, but first press the Alt key, and then as you move that slider, you'll see those white areas are the only ones that are being sharpened. So right about there, that looks good. Now, you can hold the eye icon so that you can click and hold it, and you can see that's without it. Release it, that's with it. Same up here on the basic panel where we were adjusting then our highlights and our texture and clarity. You can then click and hold that, and you can see the difference from where it was. Okay, now you would just click OK, and you can see now that that has been applied. If we zoom all the way out here and turn this layer on and off, you can see that only that counter was affected. Now, it's still not perfect, it's still not done. This is already better though than what we had before, and we have a lot of flexibility. Let's say that we thought that the highlights were brought down too much. Well, we just double click since this was a smart object, double click on camera raw filter and it's gonna open up that camera raw filter with those settings that we had so that we can adjust those adjustments further. And then you just, of course just click okay and it'll then apply those adjustments to it. Now there's more to it since it is a separate layer and it has a layer mask. One, we could delete some of the layer mask off of here, but we can take this further. So for instance, let's say that we didn't like the color of this countertop because it is picking up some warm tones that we have down here and it's pretty cool overall. So if we go in 100%, we can see some of that. If we take this layer and on there and we take, for instance, the color picker tool and sample it, you'll see these various colors change up here from being almost down toward the greens to then being very much in the blues. So if we want something that's in between, we could find a neutral type color that seems to work fairly well across the board. And then we could click OK, selecting that color. And now we could add a color adjustment layer by going to the layer menu. We want a new fill layer and we want a solid color and we want to add a clipping mask as you might recall if you've got the expert editing course then we want to take the mode and turn it into color. Once we do that then we've got that color selected we can say okay zoom out here a little bit and you can see that it added a clipping mask just to that mask that we were working with that particular layer. Now we might not like the color, it does look a little bit on the blue side, so a couple things. You can just double click there, it'll bring back up the color picker, and now you can select a different color. Something maybe a little bit more neutral like that. If you didn't like that also, you could change, for instance, the fill on it by lowering the fill, and how much of that do you wanna put in there? So this is with it, this is without it. Let's go in then 100%, and let's take a look here. So this is what where we started, it was with this, and this is what we ended up with. But let's compare this to the method of just using Lightroom Classic. And to do that, to save this even further, I'm gonna save this as a Photoshop file in the same directory where those raw files were, and then it'll load back up into Lightroom Classic so that we can really compare both. So what I'll do is I'll go to File, and I'm going to go to Save As, and I'm going to save it as a Photoshop file. And then once I do that, it'll load back up into Lightroom Classic. So here we are in Lightroom Classic. This is the file that we just edited 
This is what it was before with that very bright, dull looking countertop. From a distance, this looks okay. If we take a look at what I had done in Lightroom Classic, we can see I could maybe adjust this better on that mask to get a similar result, but the color is even better here. So let's compare the two by doing a reference. We're going to select this little icon down here, and this comes in really good when you want to get close and you really want to see the difference. So we'll click the little reference down here, and we have to select a reference photo. So I'm going to select what we had worked with before from Lightroom Classic, and I'll just put that in over here. So now I've got both that I can compare. I'm going to press tab on my keyboard to get rid of the side panels, and now I can zoom in further. So this is our reference. This was using Lightroom Classic, and it did sharpen this up. Let's go in here to what we did here with using then Photoshop, and you can see we've got a different result. So here at 100%, if I move this around, we can see some sharpness in here with some pretty good accurate colors using Lightroom Classic. It did a fair job, and I might be able to change some of that. When we get out here though, we can see that it's just a little too sharp out here. Where here, I had a little more control over some of the contrast of what was actually sharpened. So two ways to do it. Obviously this one here on the right using Photoshop got us some good results. Over here, the mask got us some okay results as well. But what was the better option? The better option overall is the Photoshop method. The result may be very similar to what we're seeing, and it does look very much toned down from what we had before, because we started with something that was very bright and dull looking. But the thing is, if I were to go in and start changing stuff with the mask here on using Lightroom Classic, that means I'd have to go to the masking tool, select that mask, try to subtract from it if I needed to. There's no such things as clipping masks. And more importantly, when you're on these masks, you can sharpen it like I did here, but there is no sharpening mask. So I don't have that ability. So it's gonna sharpen it overall. But more so, when I'm in Photoshop, I have extensive control from a few things just by using layers. One, I'm able to use a smart object. So I can go back and continually edit those uh, adjustments that I made in Camera Raw Filter, unlike what you'd be limited to using Lightroom Classic. I'm also able to use a real layer mask. I can erase off this layer mask if I want to. I can add to that layer mask if I want to. And since it's a layer, I can add clipping masks of other various adjustment layers. In this case, I just added a color fill layer. So this can be applied to a lot of different stuff where you really wanna add texture into, for instance, uh, showers to make them pop, other type of bathroom countertops, anything that needs that little extra punch, but more so, the moral of the story really is here that instead of using Lightroom Classics masking, once you conquer some of the things with layers and masks in Photoshop, all of this becomes very easy and you have a good history of it. Now, for most listing photos, would you go to this extent? Probably not. It is still more work no matter the method you chose. Whether you did use Lightroom Classics masking or you just used masking while you were doing your flambient blending using this example here in Photoshop. But the fact is, you will want to do this for higher end work. And so these unavoidable things of having a lot of glare across certain areas in the image that might need to have a little bit of oomph to them, you can easily then do that just using some simple object selections, some masks, some smart objects, and doing that in Photoshop so you have a history of it. So as you go forward, your editing becomes not just easier, but it becomes more flexible as well.